previously I've made video about how I review USMA question bank to get score of 260. In that video, I explained the fundamental principles of reviewing question bank. So in today's video, I'm going to demonstrate to you by reviewing step one questions with example. For this reviewing example, I'm going to use your world step one demo question. Note that this is not exactly how I review when I did it in the past because now we have ChatGPT. So I incorporate this technique as well. ChatGPT has revolutionized our way of learning. So it only makes sense to use it now as part of our learning tool. I made two videos about ChatGPT, which is how to study USMLE using ChatGPT and how to improve your score fast using ChatGPT. You can check those videos as well, which I firmly believe it will really help your USMLE preparation. Now, without further ado, let's get started. Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate you how to review the question bank. I'm going to use a demo from the USMLE World website and uh, you can just start do the questions and then once you're done, uh, press play to go on. So the first step would be which of the following hemodynamic changes are most likely presented in this patient. You read the last line. So you know that the question is about shock, like hemodynamic changes, and you glance at the options, you know they're gonna be asking about shock. In order to answer what the hemodynamic changes, you, of course you would need to know what type of shock these patients have. You can read the second and third last line, which is over here. You see that the diff there is a diffuse wheezing and skin rash present. It should already triggers you that it's gonna be an anaphylactic shock. Now, if that doesn't convince you, you can go ahead, read from the top um, and try to combine, get the big picture. The answer would be the same. It's still going to be an anaphylactic shock. Then you stop and recall what's going to happen in each of these parameters for patients with anaphylactic shock. And once you, you come up with the answer, then the answer should be A. If it doesn't come up to you, you do elimination, etc. I already discussed that in my test taking skills video. All right, so you can go ahead and check that out. So the answer is A. Now, let's get to the explanations on the right side. Before we start about reviewing this QBank, okay, I want you to have the idea what is the goal that we're trying to achieve, okay? And the goal that we're trying to achieve is to make sure that in the future, we will get the questions correct for any variation that's possible concept that's being tested, all right? So in this particular question, we're talking about shock. So you can anticipate in the future, probably gonna ask me about the hypovolemic shock, right? Cardiogenic shock, obstructive shock, distributive shock, etc. And then what would be the parameter? So it's easy to anticipate the future questions. You want to get those future questions correct. But I'm gonna, get a little bit further, you can also try to be a little bit more creative, okay? It's still possible if I flip the process, I, it's so easy for me to make the questions. I'm gonna make you a, a vague clinical vignette and then put this parameter and ask you what is the cause of the shock, right? I can just flip it that way. And even more so, if I want to be more advanced and then make it a little bit more confusing and then difficult, I can, do that same fake clinical vignettes, put the parameter in, and then ask you which of the following additional findings that will be expected in this patient. So if the patient have cardiac tamponade, for example, then you want to find an answer that would expect in the cardiac tamponade patients. See, that would be a very advanced questions, an integrated type of question. So I would anticipate that as well. Now I have stated the goal and you know What's your goal when you review the question bank? The question is how? How in all possible variations for the particular concept that's being tested? Well, three things. First, you want to make sure why you got the question wrong or why you got questions correct. More importantly, of course, if you got the question wrong, you want to know why you got the question wrong. Then, of course, the reason why you got the question wrong, most likely they're going to be failure of one of the three. It's going to be failure of understanding the concept. There's something that you miss about the concept or 
memorization, something that you forget, or applications. You know it, but you're unable to use it. You're unable to apply it. There's something wrong with that. Usually, you know, recognition of clinical symptoms. So you want to know why you get it wrong. So you won't make the same mistakes in the future. Even if you get it correctly, you still want to know, make sure that you will always get that correct. And especially if you're not sure between the two, that means there is a knowledge gap there that you need to fill in to make sure that in the future you won't get confused anymore. So regardless whether you get it question correct or wrong, you still need to review thoroughly and find the reason. So that's one thing. The second thing that you want to do to make sure you get all the questions in the future correct is to read every sentence here and make sure that you understand everything. Not miss any sentence of any word. So it's going to be very similar with the day-to-day -day framework where you go to first aid and then try to understand everything or the videos try to understand everything don't miss anything it's the same like that then usme world or ambush is really a good question bank we have a very good explanation so you want to make sure you understand all of them so read every sentence read see every table make sure you understand everything and the third thing is because you were doing a usme step one complete the information using first aid just like doing the day-to-day -day framework. So for this particular question, the keyword may be a PCWP or shock or cardiogenic. You can put that in first aid and try to complete the information. Make sure that you're not missing anything. So those are the ways to make sure that you got all the future questions correct. Now I'm gonna demonstrate it and show you how we do it. So we're going to read these explanations rather than just go from the table. It can be confusing for you. So read the, the explanation first, of course. So this patient with respiratory distress, wheezing, erythematous skin rest following foot exposure likely has anaphylaxis. A severe hypotension and tachycardia indicate anaphylactic shock. Now, read that and see if that makes sense for you. Now, this is the issue. If you make the mistakes because you're unable to identify what type of shock the patient has, unfortunately, actually, this, this explanation does not provide you with the explanation of the other different types of shock and how to recognize it. See, that is a little bit of downside of the question bank. It's not personalized. Okay, it tries to give you the general idea of everything. So, how do we do that? Then, we have, well, ChatGPT, right? We have ChatGPT now that can help us attack the weakness. So if you have problem with identifying the shock, go to ChatGPT and then ask, how do I differentiate between this type of shock and the other type of shock in a clinical vignette? So ChatGPT will provide you information for that. That is the key to identify in the personal level why you got the question wrong and make sure you don't make the same mistakes in the future now let's move on just continue reading the sentence and see if you understand it and just keep going and going and going now at some point there will be something that you don't understand like obviously there's some point here that you don't understand i don't know which part that doesn't make sense for you but i'm gonna just gonna point out and demonstrate to you let's use this sentence over here as our example Let's say this doesn't really make sense for you. What actually is mixed venous oxygen saturation? They don't actually give a really good explanations about that, right? It's just this one sentence. They said that the mixed venous oxygen saturation would be high because of rapid blood transit through the peripheral capillaries and incomplete oxygen uptake by the tissues. But you don't, it's kind of vague. So I'll show you how we use the chat GPT to uh, make us understand this. We go to ChatGPT over here, and you just type. Very, you can type whatever in ChatGPT. They're very smart. So, can you explain to me about the mixed venous oxygen saturation? And then they give you an explanation, and you try to read those. You okay, can put in summary: offers valuable insight, systemic oxygen delivery and consumption. Blah 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 blah. And after you read it, you have some idea. And you want to try to clarify, okay, I think I get it now. ChatGPT, does that mean that this reflects the amount of oxygen that's consumed by the body? You know, so you can just like 
like a live tutor, you can just keep asking ChatGPT questions to clarify, make it a simpler and simpler words, you know, and they'll help you with that. So here it, it did mention that the lower SVO2 indicates that more oxygen is being used by the body. High SVO2 indicates the less oxygen is being used. So it gives an idea how much oxygen the body is consuming compared to how much it's receiving. That's simple enough. After I read this, again, if you don't understand, keep clarifying with ChatGPT. But by this explanation, kind of have the idea that fixed venous oxygen show how much the oxygen is being taken to the body. So if the body takes a lot of oxygen, then the mixed venous will be low. If the body does not take much oxygen, then it's going to be high. Now, you go to the US Army world, now this makes sense. If you have an increased cardiac output, you have a lot of oxygen flow there, and the body does not take that much, so the mixed venous oxygen will be higher. That's basically how you try to clarify with ChatGPT of the information that you're not clear of. Then you move on to all this, make sure everything makes sense. Once everything makes sense, you go to the table and try to make sense of, of everything. Now, please note here, there is star mark. So in tamponade, left side preload is decreased, but the PCWP is increased due to external compression by pericardial fluid. And try to make sense of that. For me, it completely makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, again, go back to ChatGPT and have him explain it to you, all right? Now, second part of the star is cardiac index and SVO2 are usually decreased in neurogenic shock due to impaired sympathetic reflex. So in neurogenic shock, which is considered attributive shock, cardiac index is low and the SVO2 is low. Again, if it doesn't make sense to you, go to ChatGPT. But in this case, it makes sense. The reason is because in uh, neurogenic shock, there's an autonomic disturbance. Is there more parasympathetic effect? So you have bradycardia and of course the cardiac output will be low. And then if the cardiac output low, it's going to be the opposite of what they explain here. Here in distributed shock, the, the increased cardiac output will increase the mixed venous oxygen because the rapid blood transit. The rapid blood transit did not happen if you have a neurogenic shock because of bradycardia and low cardiac output. So mixed venous oxygen actually will be low. So now... Once you understand everything, go to first aid as the third step and then complete all the information here. You can type any keyword that you think makes sense. In this case, I tried to put a cardiogenic and here we have the table as well. Of course, this is an old first aid. Don't quote on me on this. It seems like the UO table has more complete information than this. And you just keep going and going and try to find if there is any... Of course, the one that related topic right now, this is not related topic in a cardiogenic shock. So you don't need to do that. It's going to be a shock uh, hemodynamic topic here. So once you complete with that, great. Now it's time to create flashcards. You want to create flashcards that give you a light bulb moment, an aha moment. Again, I give you all the rules when to create the Anki flashcards. In this situation, it would make sense to create each type of shock and then you need to be able to explain what happened and why that happened to the each parameter. Again, don't make question what happened to CVP, PCWP, da, 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 in hypovolemic shock and you say low, 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 high, high. That's, that's, that's really a bad card because it does not give you a basic understanding of, of everything. You need to explain why. So what happened and why that happen. That would be a great card to use. Now, if you choose to make the table and then occlude this, that's also a reasonable idea. But think about it this way. The most likely the clinical vignette would be one type of shock, right? So you want to recognize and then just put an explanation what's going to happen in each of the parameter in that particular shock. So it would be a four different types of Parts. You might add the neurogenic. I would add the neurogenic type of shock actually to make sure that you got this type of correct. You probably can have a conceptual card in distributive shock. The cardiac index and the mixed venous is high, but in neurogenic is not. Why? That works too. That works too. Okay, as long as conceptual. I like conceptual cards. Same thing with here in PE, in which they have picture here. PCWP 
is low and CPP is high, but in tamponet, the obstruction is actually right here, and that's why the PCWP is high. So you can make the cards for that too. In obstructive shock, this is what happened, but in cardiac tamponet, this is what happened. Why? See? Focus on why. Focus on the difference. So I think that's pretty much it for this demonstration. I hope that's helpful and makes sense to you. I know there's going to be a completely different questions and a little bit different review, but fundamental idea should be the same. All right. So that's it for today's video. I'll see you again in the next one.